Welcome back. As you can see, today we are surrounded by China. And China, the nation, has such a long and distinguished history of producing all sorts of porcelain, ceramics, pottery, fine china, that in fact the stuff we know as China has gotten its name from the country. So when we come back, we're going to get right into it. See you in a minute. Welcome back. As you can see, today we are surrounded by China. And China, the nation, has such a long and distinguished history of producing all sorts of porcelain, ceramics, pottery, fine china, that in fact the stuff we know as China has gotten its name from the country. So when we come back, we're going to get right into it. See you in a minute. All right, here's our China. Last week, we discussed Japanese porcelain. And I mentioned that in Japan, porcelain um, was ceramics, pottery. Dates back about, oh, anywhere from the most conservative estimates are 11,000 years up to perhaps as much as 15,000 years. China, it's even longer. 20,000 years easily, they have been making stuff out of clay. And their history with China is in fact so distinguished that it's why we call it that. So, I thought we'd take a look at this today. I get a lot of questions about Asian porcelain. And what we're going to focus on are the kinds of pieces that you are likely to find thrift shopping, either at yard sales, at stores like the Goodwill Community Aid, Salvation Army, etc., or in the less pricey antique shops. So, we are not going to be dealing with the fabulous old pieces um, because there are pieces of China from China that can sell for many thousands of dollars. We're going to be talking about the things we realistically could find for a few dollars and turn for a profit. So let's start with Rose Medallion Famille Rose, that group. We've discussed this before, but I know a lot of you are having trouble identifying it, and I thought that would be a good starting point for us. Now, so I have a little bit of it here, and this stuff, by the way, is just, I wandered around my house and got stuff. This is a piece of Rose Canton. It's just a little Rose Canton saucer. Now, right in the middle here, that is your rose medallion. It's not a rose, it's a peony. But the term rose medallion comes from the little medallion and the fact that it's pink. Because we get our Chinese porcelain designations from the French. They were the people who categorized it and gave us the labels that we now use. So when we talk about famille rose, we're talking about pink family. Just, we've adopted the French terms. 
That's our medallion. These around the edge are our panels. In Rose Canton, the panels are flowers. You will often hear people say, oh, well, if it has birds or butterflies, it can't be Rose Canton. No, it's very simple. If it's something other than people, in other words, flowers or birds or bugs or whatever, it's Rose Canton. Now, if like this one, it has people, and it will be alternating, people, flower, people, flower. And it's all around the central rose medallion, then it's rose medallion. And rose mandarin would be this, but with all people. It's very rare, and you don't usually find it on pieces like this. You tend to find rose mandarin patterns on vases, on two-sided objects, something that has a front and a back, and you have people, people. That's the real shorthand version. There are a lot of designs that are rose, are femial rose, um, or rose medallion that have very little to do with pink. This is a cup and saucer in the butterfly pattern. And as I said, I'm going to show you some pictures of these. So as you can see, that's much more likely to be classified as famille jaune, which is yellow, the yellow family. No, famille rose. Uh, again, French, no explanation. This is famille rose. It's not rose medallion. It's not rose canton. It doesn't fall into any of those distinct patterns. It's just pink family china. So I'm even bringing this up. Famille rose. I know you're saying it's green. Yes, it is. Cabbage leaves. That is traditionally not only considered a famille rose pattern, but it's considered a type of rose medallion. Even though there is no medallion, there's a cabbage leaf. And let me get some older pieces here. This is a plate in the same cabbage pattern, and it has a Chinese coin or symbol in the middle. Cabbage leaves. I know, it's not pink. There, there are no peonies in this. How did this get to be rose medallion? Not a clue in the world, but in fact, this is considered a type of rose medallion. And it's this cabbage pattern that I wanted to show you um, today. This is the oldest of the three cabbage leaf patterns I have here. The glaze is thick. The color is very green. Very, very green. And there's not a lot of detailing the way there is on this, which is slightly newer. These pieces are probably only about 30 years apart. This one is um, 1890 to 1920, so I'm going to call it turn of the century. This one is about 1920 to 1949, so we're just going to call it 1930. As you can see, not a lot of age difference between them, but you can tell the difference in the patterns. So why don't we take a break for a second and look at some pictures. And we're going to start with looking at the Rose Medallion and Rose Canton saucers side by side. Okay, now we're going to take a look at our straight up Famille Rose along with our butterfly pattern. And we're going to focus on the saucer because that's going to show us the pattern better. All right, now let's look at these two plates. Oops. 
Now, let's take a look at this, which is relatively modern. I'm going to give you a good close-up picture of that. Now, a lot of you are going to recognize this as a piece I recently picked up out thrifting with Jocelyn. And it was at Community Aid, and they wanted $25 for it, and I said, good Lord, no way. Well, it's worth a lot more than $25. $25 for this is a bargain. But I just got kind of annoyed the thrift shop was charging that much. This is a more modern piece. And when you look at them, you can see there are some differences. This one is actually a lovely piece. And instead of that coin, it has a beautiful little bird of some sort. I'm not good with birds. It's a bird. I don't know what kind of bird it is. Perhaps one of you know what kind of bird it is and you can tell me. But it's this wonderful cabbage leaves. This is a pattern of China that was not made for export. Now, this piece surely was, but pieces like this, rarely. These were, in fact, made for export because they are marked. But ordinarily, this was one that stayed in China. The Chinese kept this for themselves. Rose Medallion, they shipped that all over the world. But... I, perhaps it was just that they thought we wouldn't be interested in cabbage leaves. I don't know. Um, cabbage has such a bad reputation here. Although from what I understand, Prince Philip calls Queen Elizabeth his little cabbage. So what can I say? Maybe cabbages are a lot more appealing than I ever thought. These, however, are pieces you can find. We got these jostling spotted these for, I believe, $7 a piece at one of those grungy little antique malls where, you know, definitely not a high-end place. Boy, she just, she lit on this. You can find them. The reason it's very, well, relatively, I'm not going to say very easy, but relatively easy to find these is because it's a little known pattern. And when people don't know it, they don't recognize it. Those of us who do can come in and scoop it up. Those are definitely valuable pieces. Those are worth acquiring. This one, even at $25, as I say, was worth acquiring because it's, it's a very, very large bowl. But it is modern. Now, when we start looking at how to tell it's modern, one of the things you may have noticed from the photo, and certainly I hope you notice from the filming, is it is speckled with gilding. There are little dots of gold all around this. Now, that is the indication of a modern piece because 50, 60, 100 years ago, uh, gilding was expensive. They, they had to use gold. Nowadays, we can replicate gold. I have a can of gold spray paint sitting over on the counter uh, that I think I paid $5 for. So pretend gold is extremely inexpensive now. And pieces like this can be gilded very inexpensively. And as a consequence, we are seeing much more gilding in new pieces. If you find a piece of Chinese porcelain that is heavily gilded, it is one of two things. It's a very valuable old piece because, of course, it's real gold. Or it's a more modern piece. But this is one of the patterns to keep your eye out for. As I say, it's a wonderful old traditional pattern but because it was not intended for export, people don't know it, not the way they know Rose Medallion. Now, this is another piece. This piece is relatively modern, and this is a design 
that the French would call mille fleurs, which just means thousand flowers, and the Chinese would just call it thousand flowers because, you know, they're not French. This is another piece that has gilding in it, not a lot, but gilding mixed in with the chrysanthemum. It's a very nice chrysanthemum designs centered on this. This is a little lidless ginger jar. Um, I'm going to guess that this is probably second quarter of the 20th century. This is eventually going to become a lamp. I do not have the lid for it. Um, I paid a couple of dollars for it at the thrift store. It will, it will make a wonderful small lamp and a fantastic giveaway. So that's where this is bound. It's a nice piece. Now this is the same pattern, but a little older. Notice the colors are a little more subdued. This one is a little brighter. This one is a little less bright. And the building, which is all over the place here, we've got a couple of tiny dots and a little gilding on the rim. And this is what we expect because it's older and gilding was expensive. Again, one of the ways we can tell the difference. This piece, by the way, these Milfla pieces, I'm seeing them turn up all over the place lately. So I would say, look for them, grab them. This is a modern piece. There are a couple of ways we know. It's got a marking on the bottom saying, for decorative use only, not for food use. That's modern. Anytime you see that, you know it's not a really old piece. Now, when I say modern, also keep in mind, when you are talking about a country that has been producing pottery and ceramics for 20,000 years, modern is a very relative concept. When I say modern, I'm talking about post-1950. This one has some very extensive gilding. Uh, the handle on the lid, this little piece here, gilded. The handle is gilded. There is a lot of gilding. I'm sure it's catching the light very nicely. Oh, I certainly hope it's catching the light very nicely. Again, brighter coloration here. See the difference? Um, when you are used to looking at them, you can see when you see a newer piece next to an older piece, it's pretty easy to tell which is which. Again, sweet little piece. Thrift shop, a couple of bucks. Um, and it's hard to say. A, a piece like this would do very, very well at auction if I were to put this on eBay because it's beautiful. And the gilding is exceptionally nice. So is that a good resale investment? Absolutely. And I've got a couple more pieces, some tiny little ginger jars. These are just very cute. This one, which is not heavily gilded, although it does have gilding on it, notice how bright the colors are. This very just bold, bold colors. This one, same thing, not quite as bright, but very nearly. And again, a lot of gilding. So that's telling us these are relatively modern pieces, but they're absolutely adorable. I think this one is about two and a half, three inches tall. This is about four inches tall. So they are little mini ginger jars. Um, great, great little pieces. You see something like that? Um, Again, a couple of bucks. Uh, and when I say a couple of bucks, I, I mean literally like $2. Uh, pick them up for $2. You've got to know this is going to sell for a lot more than $2. But this is what I am seeing these days. So this is something that's coming onto the market. It's something you should be aware of, that you should be on the lookout for. Because Chinese porcelain always has been popular, probably always will be popular. Um, 
here's some other interesting pieces. Oh, wait, before I do that, let me just show you quickly the pictures of these mill flare pieces so you can get a good close-up look at them. Okay, this is something that is called grain of rice pattern. Now, here's the legend on this. Oh, here's a plate also. And again, I will show you some pictures so you can see it. You have little, maybe you can see it better from the back, little designs that look like translucent grains of rice. Now, the legend is, and, and I have to say, it's, it's not like, uh, it, it's a legend. It's a story associated with these pieces. So it's not that, that there's any effort to deceive. And sometimes, especially with the Chinese who have a very different concept of truth in advertising than we do, this can be perceived as deceitful. Well, it's not. It's just the legend associated with the piece. The legend is that they embedded little grains of rice in the china, and then when it was fired, you know, when it was still in a soft clay form, then when it was fired, the rice burned out and left behind the little sort of rice spots. That's not actually what happens, but in fact, it's a cute little legend associated with these pieces, and that's what they get their name from, these little translucent rice grains and we have a bowl and a plate um i do not believe these are a set there's a certain similarity and who knows they might actually go together um there's a certain similarity and notice they have this lotus flower in the middle I am actually going to have to check and see if they are, in fact, a set. If they are a set, that would be ever so much nicer than them not being. But this is something that you will see from time to time. The way you will identify it is it is almost always blue and white, sometimes, as in the case of the plate. There's a little bit of color in this. This is sort of a peachy color. Blue and white with the little rice grain pattern. So let's take a close-up look at the little rice grain pattern. Um, and I hope this comes out well in the pictures because the little rice grains that are not really rice grains are translucent. Um, it looks as if somebody just, well, put grains of rice into the plates and let them fire off. I am seeing a little more of this now than I used to. And these pieces are, again, relatively recent. Um, they are not made yesterday, not that recent, but relatively recent. These are not antique pieces. Um, all right, let's take a look at rice grain pictures before I go on. Now, this, this is something very interesting. I got a pair of these bowls. This, this is called Dragon and Phoenix. Guess why? Right, because we've got a dragon and a phoenix in the pattern. And these are just incredibly popular because people do love the motifs, uh, the design. I don't know what to say. There are some figures on China that just really sell very well. Um, a bat, for example, is going to sell better than a bird. Dragon and Phoenix sells very well 
because people love them. These are wonderful mythological animals, and people are just, they just resonate with people. So a piece like this, and who's got a friend over here, even though it's modern, um, is still going to be a very worthwhile purchase because it will sell. People do want this. And I can understand why. In this case, uh, the designs are really very, very nice. So let's take a quick look at these before we move on. All right, this, let me take the lid off so I can move this. It's a blue and white ginger jar. A lot of Chinese porcelain historically has been blue and white. Canton ware, willow ware, just plain white with dark blue designs. This is and always has been an outstandingly popular color combination in Chinese porcelain. This is nice. This is a very heavy piece. Um, it's marked Made in China. Relatively modern, not too modern. Again, we've got the Made in China mark, so that's telling me it's not too, too modern. Very interesting piece, well executed. You find something like this. This ginger jar is about eight or nine inches tall. I'm not pro. Yeah. Um, a size like this, definitely saleable. This is something that people like and will buy. This was something I got at Community Aid some time ago. It's in one of Jocelyn's videos, uh, and I think this was a $3 buy at Community Aid. A $3 buy like that is definitely going to go for a lot more. This I grabbed outside off the porch. It's planters. So I've still got the dirt in it. But I did want you to see this so you can see how common this blue and white pattern is. This is about 30 or 40 years old. And it's another style of this cobalt blue and white. This is stylized chrysanthemums. Um, again, very, very popular patterns, popular color combinations. So let's take a quick look at the blue and white pieces. Thing. Now here's one. Put the lid off so I can. This is just beautiful. This was a gift from Jocelyn. She found this and she brought this home to me because she's a good bestie. This is just lovely. Again, cobalt blue, but it has this nice sort of peachy terracotta color to it. Nice little accent. Um, a little touches of green. Not a lick of gilding. This was not a, a fancy piece. When this piece was made, it was probably not made for export. It was probably made to stay in China and, and do utilitarian service in a Chinese home. So this would have been in China somebody would have kept the tea in this. This is a fantastic piece. It really is. Uh, and I do like these utilitarian pieces, the pieces that you know were in somebody's home that, you know, you take the lid off and you can practically smell the tea. Pieces like this can occasionally be found, not often. 
Jocelyn got this at a flea market, though. I didn't ask her how much she paid for it. I'm going to have to. If I know her, it was like a massive, massive bargain. Um, can they be had? Yeah. Flea market find. And she just picked this up maybe three or four weeks ago. So she might even have this on one of her videos. Great piece. And my dog dish. This is another one of those utilitarian pieces. Heavy Chinese stoneware. All right. This was not made for export. This was not meant to be a fancy piece. This was a piece of stoneware that somebody in China was using to mix their dinner vegetables in. Very interesting pieces. High-end, not even close. Heavy stoneware, very utilitarian. Um, this piece is probably around 200 years old. And yes, it is my dog dish. And if she finds out I'm holding it and there's no dog food in it, we're going to have a problem around here. But lovely pieces. I have seen pieces like these in those sort of low-rent antique shops. Um, ordinarily, they have the sense not to charge too much for them because they're heavy utilitarian pieces. They're not elegant, but they're beautiful. And they're actually probably good bargains if you can find them. This turquoise lining glaze. The bowls will be in usually white or, well this is sort of off-white, with some sort of design, sometimes calligraphy, sometimes a, a sort of sketchy flower. In this case it's just bars. But that turquoise lining, that that is very characteristic of these pieces. If you find pieces like this in good condition, and this one is chipped, you're wondering why the dog gets to eat on the 200-year-old porcelain. It's because it's got chips. It's not, this is not a perfect piece, and it's big enough to hold a lot of dog food. You can, you can find pieces like this, especially if you find them in good condition, they will resell. They will resell as antiques, so grab them. But I wanted you to see this simply because, like our cabbage pattern, these were not made for export. So when people have them and they are selling them, they generally don't know what they have. And now you do. So grab them up. Definitely worth the investment. Now, Let's take a break for a minute. I need to show you pieces of our pictures of the blue pieces and pictures of these two older, heavier stoneware pieces. because I want you to be able to identify them when you find them. Can you find them? Absolutely. Jocelyn found this large ginger jar a few weeks ago at a flea market. Um, Community Aid, it's on the video. Uh, the rest of these, this was a few weeks ago. I think a Community Aid might have been Goodwill. Same with pieces like this. So you've been with us on the Crazy Lamp Lady channel when I've purchased these pieces, so you know where we're getting them. They're coming from thrift stores. So watch for them. They are worth getting. They have a strong resale value. Um, you put them up on eBay or Etsy, you will definitely sell them. Now, I think we're going to stop there. We're going to uh, let's take a quick look at a couple of pen giveaway pictures. 
our friend Kathy. And if you'll recall, she was one of our first pen giveaway winners. Kathy had used her pen with her special ed class. And when one of her students does a really good job, that's their treat. They get to use the special pen. So here's a picture of another one of Kathy's students using the pen. All right, here is one of our most recent pen giveaway winners. Uh, one of our viewers, Mimsy, wanted a pen for her sister-in-law, Carol. And here's Carol with her pen. And Mimsy says that Carol was much more delighted with what the pen looked like than how well it wrote. And I didn't understand that till I looked at the picture of Carol and thought, well, she's a styling woman. She's definitely going to be interested in the looks first. So congratulations to the winners. Um, our Toyo Koi platter, that was our wonderful uh, donation from Kelly Williams. Um, our winner, unfortunately, has not claimed it. So, new giveaway on the Toyo Koi platter. Here's a picture. All right, that's this week between today and next Saturday. Just write in, give me that platter, and we're just going to run that giveaway all over again. Whole new contest. All you need to do is just say, give me, because I'm going to select a winner at random. Now, pen giveaways are still going on. Behind me, there is a cup of pens. Perhaps you have noticed. We've still got plenty of pens. Absolutely let me know. What I'm going to do, I'm changing my pen giveaway system. If you want a pen, I am putting an email address in the notes under this video. It'll be directly below the video. It's going to say pen giveaway. It's going to show you where to send. Just send an email. Tell me what you want the pen for because we have left-handed pens. Um, a couple, not, not very many. We have mostly right-handed pens, but we have left-handed pens. We have arthritis-friendly pens. We have normal pens, pens that are just, let's see, here is the difference. Whereas this one was gorgeous, nice, bulky, hold it in your hand even if you have trouble gripping. So, I need to know left-handed arthritis friendly or also if it's male because I don't think that's the sort of pen you want to be, you know, giving to a man. So if it's male, let me know. There are some that are a little more male friendly, but definitely let me know what you need the pen for. And I'm just going to sort of go through chronologically you know, as the emails come in, and we're still going to be giving away the pens. Um, we need to hear from you about the flatware giveaway. If you want to enter that for the flatware, we have the three-piece set uh, for adults. We have the two-piece set for younger people. Again, special needs. This is something that um, I'm reserving for those of you who have special needs or a loved one with special needs because this is, um, this is what Lisa designed them for. The pens are all, oh, and the flatware, all from Desert Dragon Works. Lisa very graciously donates these 
They are beautiful. So let me know. And remember, if you are looking for a pen, give me the specifics. Also, send your name and address too so that I know where to send it. Um, let's see, what else? I think that's about it. I think we're finally able to wrap this up. All right, tomorrow we're going to be drilling into porcelain. So if you're going to follow along with me, get out your drill, prepare to get messy. I will see you all tomorrow.